preparation and for the launch of a strategy. It's a five-year strategy to fight against violence, uh, to fight uh, for violence against women. It's a five-year plan and it has three main areas of action. The first one is the prevention, to prevent this type of, uh, this type of situations. The second one is to provide uh, support to the victims at all levels, if it's uh, to provide shelter, to provide uh, uh, food, to provide also uh, uh, training in order to get uh, jobs. And the third uh, area is the coordination among the different institutions of the government in order to give an holistic support to the victims. There are 160 measures, specific actions, that the, the strategy includes, and it has a budget uh, of more than 272 million euros. So there are uh, very concrete and concise actions in order to avoid all this um, uh, violence at all levels and the different forms of the, the this kind the, this problem. Eh, bueno, tenemos ahí unos trípticos que hemos traído, por si pueden ser de su interés, y, y esperemos que entre todos eh, podamos conseguir pues, que la sociedad madrileña, en nuestro caso, pero la sociedad en general, eh, queda muchísimo por hacer. Hemos, eh, hemos conseguido mucho las mujeres, eh, pero entre todos eh, tenemos que conseguir eh, una sociedad más igualitaria y más justa porque eh, las mujeres somos la mitad, la mitad de, del talento y entre todos lo vamos a conseguir. Muchas gracias. Eh, to conclude, uh, we would like to share with you, there are leaflets in English about uh, the gender strategy that we, we have developed and we will implement the, within this uh, next five years and there are also uh, information about uh, all the policies in, uh, related to gender that we are uh, developing and implementing, not only with uh, about uh, gender-based violence, but also about equality, gender equality. And we would like to emphasize that there is uh, a lot to do uh, still in order to achieve gender equality, but it is important to reinforce uh, that women is as important as men within the society. We are half, half, 50% uh, of uh, the society is, uh, is male, is, uh, they are men and 50 are females. So we, we, we all together have to build a, an, a balanced society where the, um, the voice of women has the same strength as men and we, where we are as empowered as they are. Hello everyone, um, my name is Valerissa Baker and I'm representing Boston University in the, in the USA. I am also a Gates Millennium Scholar, which is how I was funded here. I see you guys in the audience. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to jump right into this because I know we're a little bit short on time. Um, but what is actual good governance? Um, the definition of it is a little bit ambiguous, but it should incorporate a number of things um, ranging from it should be transparent, equitable, inclusive, responsive, participatory, and accountable. And these are all important to ensure that the local government meets its legislative responsibilities in order to establish trust and confidence between the community and the people that are representing them. Um, it could be implemented in a number of ways, ranging from planning and monitoring through financial plans as well as municipal strategic statements, which should all be very transparent. It can also be implemented during discussions, during council meetings, which should be inclusive of the knowledge and opinions of the community, and also through policy development and lawmaking. So different factors that affect good governance include um, human rights, for one. So in 1948, 
the UN's General Assembly came together and 192 state members signed the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. In short, it was a declaration that serves as a global expression of what people believe to be rights to which all human beings um, are in, entitled to. Although it was ratified by 192 members representing those countries, it's not always upheld. And a perfect example of that is what's going on in America with the Flint water crisis. So this crisis has been actually occurring since April 2014, and it's still going on right now. Um, basically, it's the contamination of water in their households, and it's affected between 6,000 to 12,000 children, which is going to really impact their health in the long run. So even though the media is just now you know, talking about and it's just coming up within the last couple months. Like, it's been happening for the past two years, and the government official in, Cl in Flint has just resigned, but has he been accountable for all of the lives that he's affecting? Exactly. <laughs> um, exactly. So, oh, we have a lot of people in Michigan in the back. So, there's different tools that you know, really help us, you know, raise awareness and um, about corruption. And for one, it's the Transparency, Interna Transparency International's um, Corruption Perception Index. A lot of words. Um, and basically, it's a platform that exposes the abuse of entrusted power through both private and public sectors. And it gives a voice to the victims and witnesses of corruption so that officials can be pressured and be held accountable for their actions. So another factor includes um, social cohesion. And basically, that's the willingness of members of a society to work together and just push towards survival and prosperity of its community. But also, cultural diversity has a huge role in good governance. Look at us today, like we're all here um, at the Women Economic Forum. We come from different backgrounds. And the idea of good governance is so ambiguous because of people's perception around it. But due to time, I'm just going to close with that. And I can answer any questions later. I'm going to pass the mic on to the next panelist. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dover Neal. Uh, I'm also going to keep mine short because I'm going to be speaking about data. And I'm sure it'll bum you out that I won't go on and on about that. But uh, uh, I'm a policy analyst. And um, I have just professionally worked with data and data analysis because that's, like everyone, my passion. <laughs> um, and uh, I look at data as a tool um, to essentially inform and measure good policy and good governance. Um, I slice policy a lot of different ways. I look at it across levels, so neighborhood, city, state, federal, um, across locations, so similar cities of similar sizes, and across issues, especially issues that are interrelated, uh, like homelessness and unemployment and drug abuse. Um, using uh, data, I think, is really important because as, like, we were everyone here has talked about data to make their points more understandable, frankly, because uh, when you're making governance, it's about people. That's the point of governments. You have governments to take care of people. Um, and data allows you to understand the individual at a much larger level. Um, so I think of data and as, again, a tool. Uh, it's not the be-all, end-all. It's something to help you measure whether or not the policies you're creating are effective, and it helps keep transparency and accountability uh, in place. There's um, Charles Lindblom is a policy analyst that I respect quite a bit, and uh, paraphrasing roughly from what he says, when policy is decided by analysis, there are clear and measurable reasons for choosing one over the other. Um, that's transparency. Um, when politics determines policy, policy is set by the various ways in which people exert control and power over each other. Um, so 
so going back to using it as a tool, if you, if you live in a town where there's one homeless person, say you've seen one homeless person, first of all, congratulations on living in the world's nicest town. Um, but you don't need a series of laws and policy to address that one homeless person. You need some concerned individuals to take some action and help them out, get them on their feet, and you've solved your entire homeless problem. Um, in all likelihood, you're in a city with hundreds or thousands of homeless people, and they don't all have the same issues. They're not all on the street for the same reason, and they won't all be helped in the same way. Um, so for me, the way I look at helping create the most effective policy is to get the best information on those people. Um, you would go out and on the ground survey as many people as you can find and ask all the same questions, get the same information across the board. Um, so you would find out who are these people? Are they men? Are they women? Are they trans? Are they straight? Are they gay? Do they have mental health issues, drug abuse issues, physical health issues? Getting all of that information across the entire homeless population allows you to understand better how you can help them. If you have a city, um, I was talking last night, uh, if you have a city like Los Angeles that has a homeless population, you might look to New York to see what they've done to help their homeless population. But it's not going to be a carbon copy. People in New York need to help not to die of hypothermia and frostbite in the winter. In Los Angeles, you need to worry about dehydration. Um, so you wouldn't necessarily have the same exact programs in place. And similarly, a 50-year-old man who's been homeless for 20 years because of a lifelong heroin addiction is not going to be helped by the same programs probably that a 16-year-old trans girl who's been thrown out of her house will be. They might both benefit from food and shelter, but their long-term solutions are probably going to be different. Um, so essentially, I just enjoy getting all of that information and looking to see what the policies are and holding people accountable to if the if the law that you have created is presumably to help some people you can measure it if you get enough data and you can say this is not actually working or it is working and similarly um, efficiency is something that Help, a very helpful measure and is part and parcel of data, but similarly is not a goal in and of itself. It's useful for comparing effective policies. The point is to have something that's effective. If you have two different um, policies in place that are both helping homeless people and they've both shown to be effective, then seeing which one requires less time and resources, that's a great way to decide which one to go for. But if you've been going for five years and you're saying, oh, this is great, um, our homelessness initiative is extremely cheap and it costs almost nothing and hardly anyone needs to be there. Is it doing anything? Who knows? It's efficient, but it's not effective. Um, so having the tools to measure that is for me one of the most important things to keep government honest and accountable. <laughs>